Stay tuned and let's take a look at the Marvel Legends Thor, Love and Thunder, Korg Builder Figure, Mighty Jane Foster 4. Pow and welcome back to the channel Dan Who Reviews. As always, my name is Dan W. Make sure you are following me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. And remember, you can now hit that join button and become a channel member as well. Either show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. Today, we are taking a look at the Marvel Legends Thor, Love and Thunder, Korg Builder Figure, Mighty Thor, aka Jane Foster. Thor. Now we have not seen Jane Foster in the MCU since Thor The Dark World and I'm very happy to not just see Jane Foster return but happy to see Natalie Portman return as Jane Foster and this is the first time we are getting her in any incarnation in Marvel Legends. Now she's obviously the mighty Thor here, she's been able to wield Mjolnir, we've seen a tease of it in the trailer but we don't really know the context yet. Like obviously we know Jane Foster picks up the hammer in the comics but are they following that same story in the movie we don't really know yet we will find out very soon but i am very happy to see it and looking forward to seeing it all the same the figure looks great i love that we get a helmeted head and an unhelmeted head as i said this is the first time we've got a movie jane foster uh, we are getting a, a leg for the cork builder figure as well and a broken milnier it has got some cracks in it that same image on the top we get an image of the mighty four on the side there that different image on the side of natalie portman as mighty thor jane foster we get a roll of the reeds Jane Foster's life is forever changed when she mysteriously comes to possess the hammer Mjolnir and the power of the mighty Thor. And then as always, you get a list of all the figures in this wave. You need to build the Korg Builder figure. Today we're reviewing Mighty Thor. So the bio didn't really give anything away, which is good. I'm looking forward to the movie and uh, looking forward to this figure. Let's get her open. So here we have the Mighty Thor out of the packaging with all of her accessories, including the leg for the builder figure Korg. So you know what to do, subscribe to the channel and we will build and review him very soon. Until then, let's take a look at Jane Foster. Now it's taken me a while to get used to her with blonde hair. I'm still not used to it, to be honest, but we're zooming in a look in a minute. She does come with Milnir as course, which looks pretty big for her, but again, I'm used to seeing this with four. So on a smaller character, I guess he does look a little bit oversized. Uh, and then we also get the interchangeable head with the helmet, but still has the likeness uh, to Jane Foster as well, which I like to Natalie Portman, of course. So very curious of all this. It is a completely pinless Marvel legend, which again, you know, I love saying it. It's very aesthetically pleasing. Also double jointed elbows on a female with no pins beautiful same with the knees double joints no pins this is going to be very nice for posing however it does have a hard plastic cape which looks fine if you're just posing a neutral but it does make a very back heavy and i've had mine toppling over quite a few times already and i have hardly started this review i'm hoping when she's holding the hammer that will help balance her up but we'll figure that out in a minute the armor looks great uh, but yeah blonde jane foster let's zoom in and have a look zooming in like this sometimes through the camera lens it doesn't really give the figure its due because in person I definitely see the likeness to Natalie Portman especially in the face I just think it's the blonde hair that's putting me off and that's not a knock to the figure that's accurate to what we see remember but we've not seen the film all we've seen are those brief moments in the trailer so we haven't really got that mind's eye of Mighty Four a blonde Jane Foster just yet but I'm assuming that the powers somehow turn her hair blonde because you can see she's got darker roots and then the hair gets lighter and more blonde as it gets longer. So yeah, in regards to the face sculpt and to the likeness, I definitely think they've done a great job here. We're just not used to seeing it yet, but it's very nice. But still, I like we've got options. Again, I appreciate options. So we can have this very nice unhelmeted head, or of course, you can switch out for the helmeted Mighty Thor head, which again, looks really nice. The likeness is still there in the eyes as well. Even behind the helmet, it has some sculpted in sort of Asgardian insignia in red at the front. And if I spin it around you can see it's more of a chrome color glimmering off my lights has some more red and blacks and then the sort of wing tips are nicely there as well which are a trademark to all Thors of course and you spin it around this side you can see some more details again on the back her hair is sticking out and it has the same sculpted hair as the unmasked head as well but again you can see that the unhelmeted head has the darker hair at the tops and it gets lighter towards the bottom but that's the same on the front and the back they're not braids it's just sort of long hair dangling but they're the same sculpt but yeah you have options now 
now with our Mighty Four. The helmet looks really nice. It really does. The nice pink subtle lips. The eyes are still punched in really nicely there, embedded in the helmet, as you can see from the side. So yeah, I love having options. And it, now I guess it depends how much screen time each one of these gets on the actual movie. Because in the trailer, we've seen her with a helmet and without both wearing her new Mighty Four costume. So I guess we've got to wait until we've seen the film, depending on my preference. But uh, you let me know in the comments below, which do you prefer? Do you prefer helmeted Mighty Thor? Or do you prefer unhelmeted Jane Foster Thor? Let's take a closer look at the Mighty Thor. So we've not seen the movie, but we have seen the trailer and some concept art. And I do think this looks very accurate to what we're going to see on screen. A beautifully pinless body with all the articulation you're going to want. Some nice details on the front here as well. Have you got all those trademarks of Thor with the discs? The cape is attached by a disc up here as well. And then you've got different colours as well. You've got chrome, red, some blacks. There's some red piping here on the skirt piece as well. The maroon skirt piece is sort of matching the sort of maroon of the sort of air. Uh, wrist gauntlet and gloves if you will uh, down to the boots as well i love how the boots by the way have like a little wing tip on them just like the helmet does which is a, a very nice touch so yeah subtle but i've noticed it's good uh, underneath the skirt piece is just black trousers she's got the the chrome knee pads as i said so uh yeah very nice figure with some very nice details on here not much on the back obviously because it's hidden by the cape but there are sculpted details are still there and uh, yeah, lots of range as well for articulation. Uh, so yeah, really liking this. She's got one open palm hand, one gripping hand for Milner, of course, which we'll look at in a second. But uh, yeah, she's got the swivel at the thigh, double jointed knees, which I've already showed you, ankle pivot and rocker. No boot cut though. It does seem like there should be one, but there isn't one there. She's got the bicep swivel up top, double jointed elbows, which is beautiful, by the way. Like, look how good the range is here for a female. Like, so good. Like, can you get better than that? I don't know. Head is on a dumbbell as I've, have I showed you that? So the head's on a dumbbell, not a disc and rock. So you've got some rotation there. And then it's all about this diaphragm joint. This is where you get the wiggle. That's where you get your up and down, side to side. Um, so yeah, I reckon you're going to get her in some nice poses for sure in a very accurate costume. But she can't be Thor without the hammer. And if the outfit didn't give it away, Jane Foster is worthy. She now possesses the power of Thor. That means she can wield Milnia. Now in the MCU, remember Halla smashed it. So this is a brand new sculpt for Marvel Legends. As if you see, hopefully the light catches this, there are some cracks in this Milnia, in the actual sculpt. Now it would have been nice to have some wash within that to bring out the details. But again, we've not seen the movie. Maybe in the movie you can't even tell that it's pieced back together either. We shall see, but it looks very nice all the same. Uh, the stilt looks really good as well with some chrome wraps all the way around it with some brown and then you've got that plastic piece that you can sort of wrap over the hands of course so it doesn't fall off and you lose it in the collection uh, but she can hold it in her gripping hand as well of course no problem at all uh, and yeah with the double jointed elbows you can get some really nice poses on her for sure again the other hand is an open palm hand no interchangeable hands here but if we're going to get two hands I don't mind these because these didn't come with the figure but if you've got Marvel Legends in the collection then I'm sure you have some type of energy you electric effects and you can literally wrap these around uh, Jane now to make her look like she's possessing the power of four. So let's move into some comparisons. First up, another figure in this wave with the Ravenger Thor. Now there is another Thor in this wave that's wearing the armor and he has his helmet, but I've not quite opened him just yet. But soon we will. I'm just glad that uh, Jane is standing because it's really hard to get her to balance with that cape. I'm using Milnir to sort of counteract the cape. But uh, yeah, I feel like if I sneeze, she's gonna fall because the cape doesn't touch the Thor. So you can't use it to help a balance so a little bit awkward here we have Jane Foster 4 compared to her early MCU Thor just to see how they look together I think this one is the one that came in a two-pack with Lady Sif I think the 20th anniversary but don't quote me either way these look great together both clearly Thor here we have the mighty Thor compared to another couple of figures from this love and thunder wave with two guardians of the galaxy with Star-Lord and Groot and you can see Groot is about the same height as mighty Thor here we have Mighty Thor compared to a couple of other females from the MCU with Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow and Brie Larson's Captain Marvel. And it's always fun to do this comparison when we can. Here we have our comic Jane Foster Thor compared to our MCU Jane Foster Thor. Thor. And as you can see, I think they've done a pretty good job translating that comic design into live action. The MCU are masters at it. And honestly, this MCU figure is probably better than the comic one. But I'm biased and the MCU figures usually get a little bit more love as well. But still, they've done a great job. Both of these are clearly Jane Foster Thor. Uh, I do wish uh, that 
the comic one didn't have this rock hard cape. I actually prefer the softer cape that's on the MCU version. And also the MCU Mjolnir is a different mold. It's actually a bigger hammer. See what I mean? The MCU one is definitely bigger than the comic one. Also the MCU one's gray where the comic one's got a little bit more of a chrome sort of shine to it. And obviously it doesn't have the cracks in either, but that is story specific to the MCU. I don't think that happened in the comic. No, I'm pretty sure it didn't. Here we have Mighty Thor compared to Frogman and Tigra. And last but never least, here we have Mighty Thor compared to Captain Britain. And let's address him by his actual full name, shall we? Worthy Hal Fire Hank. So, final thoughts on this Thor, Love and Thunder, Mighty Thor, aka Jane Foster Thor. Now, I have to be honest. I'm using glue tack to her feet to get her to stand on this rotating base as she slowly spins around as that cape makes her too back heavy and there's no way I would have got her to balance otherwise. However, as you can see, it does get into some nice poses as it's a very nice female Marvel legend. Completely pinless, double jointed elbows and knees, and it looks very accurate to what we're eventually gonna see on the movie. Now, we've only seen the trailer and it looks pretty spot onto that, and we haven't got too long to wait now. The movie is less than a month away, and I, for one, are very excited to see Natalie Portman return as Jane Foster in Thor with this particular storyline as well. I'm very curious, do you like that adaptation in the comics? Do you like when Jane Foster becomes Thor? Always curious to hear your thoughts. Let let me know in the comments and let me know do you like this figure because i think they've nailed it love the interchangeable heads and uh yeah i'm a fan but uh you let me know what you think and of course if you want to see more marvel legend reviews guess what you're in the right place check out the videos tab find the playlist but most importantly please 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 hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell don't miss out on a video and please hit that join button become a channel member either show some love or join the members club much much appreciated you can follow me on instagram at it's dan who and I'm on Twitter as well. Tweet me, don't be shy, at Dan Who Reviews. And until then, people, my name is Dan W. And I will, of course, see you on the next one.